Good afternoon. Um, so um, I'm from Hydromod. Uh, Hydromod is a company created uh, in 1992, uh, and uh, it's th these are more or less the figures of the company: 600k a year. It has 12 people. Uh, we have delivered more than 400 projects right now. Uh, we've recently made, in the last um, seven years, uh, seven. Yeah. Um, we've made a big investment in developing an operational system called AquaSafe, um, and we have all, almost 20 uh, systems in different parts of the world. Uh, uh, majority of them, of course, in Portugal, but we also have we have uh, in uh, in uh, South America and, and in Spain, and uh, we are a very proud IST spin-off. We are um, the first one from the Martech Group and one of the oldest spin-offs of the, of the Institute. So what are our data providers? Of course, uh, the CMEMS, uh, the Copernicus Marine Service. Uh, but of course, we also use NOAA. Um, uh, and we, 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 we like to use both. Um, we use regional centers, Meteo Galicia, uh, in uh, Galicia, <laughs> Cipitec uh, in Brazil, Puerto del Estado in, in Spain, um, and uh, for real-time data, which is very uh, needed in, this, in these systems, uh, Instituto Hidrográfico in Portugal, Puerto del Estado, GLOSS, and uh, usually Port Authorities, which is one of our major, major clients, have their own uh, real-time data and, well, others. And of course, we also produce data. We also produce models, uh, real-time models. Um, um, so what are the needs of our clients uh, and of the end users of these, of, these, uh, of these systems? So they need an integrated operational solution. So ne they need met meteorology, meteorology, hydrodynamics, waves, rivers, uh, river inputs or outputs. <laughs> Um, and they need this uh, for their operations, and usually they also need this uh, for emergencies, so for uh, oil, oil and chemical spills in water or in air. Um, the other thing is that these systems must be oriented at uh, um, the higher risk situations. So if you have a model that is very good in average um, situations, but doesn't uh, quite well uh, get the peaks uh, because it uh, unstabilizes, because it has problems, uh, then you have a problem. Uh, the client will not like it because that's when he has the most need for, it, for your information. Uh, on the other side, the client always likes redundancy. So if you just have one model, uh, you're uh, much worse than if you have two models. And if you have three, it's even better. Doing exactly the same thing. So I mean, not models for different things. So <laughs> computing exactly the same parameter. And um, another thing, uh, they are all wrong. So all of them. And the data also is wrong. So um, you, you, you need to evaluate your uncertainty. Uh, um, and uh, clients need reporting, reporting in real time, reporting for, uh, hist for uh, uh, historic situations. So why was the decision taken and what was the information available then uh, so that you can justify uh, the decision that you, that you took? Um, and um, another thing, we see that there's a market being created in, uh, in, in this area. And, uh, well, I'll talk a bit about this later also. So the graphic I, I have put a lot of times, it all starts on meteorology. That's why uh, I always insist, where is the meteorological solution? How can we access the meteorological solution? Because if you don't have it, you have a problem. Um, then you have hydrodynamic models, great. You have the global solution. You have 
uh, you usually have regional solutions. You, you usually don't have local solutions. We usually have to build them, but sometimes there are some local um, universities, companies that have local uh, solutions. Um, then you have wave models, uh, which are also forced by meteorology, sometimes connected to hydrodynamic models, uh, but I will not go into details. Then you have observations in situ remote sensing, some of them used to uh, forced models like flows, uh, river flows, or water levels if you want to force a wave model. So, uh, but mainly observations are used to validate for online validation of, of the models. So we, as a philosophy, we don't use data, we don't assimilate data. We leave it to the big guys to assimilate data to the global models, and we usually don't assimilate data as a philosophy. Then we, we gather all this, and then we have to, to uh, as, it called, as we call it, data, to enhance the data, to turn this into information that we can push to, to the client. Okay, so this is the, a bit uh, uh, the design of the thing, of the, of the systems that we have implemented. I, I've now just selected an example uh, so that I'm not just speaking about uh, the theoretic part of, of this. And I took the past six months from two of our systems that have been working, uh, and I took the example of sea level in the system we have in Santos, and it's being used in this case by the, the pilotage of the port of Santos, which is a large port. Uh, it's the largest port in Latin America. And uh, the port of Lechonge, okay? So this is a comparison between the average sea level uh, calculated with the tight gauge and, uh, and the model, MOID. Uh, so the, the, the sea level from the tight gauge has all the physics. Okay? So it's a 50, uh, uh, um, a 50 hour average of the sea level at the tight gauge compared with the 50 hour average of the model which has in the boundaries the sea level of the global model of CMEMS. Okay? So, and the, um, the, uh, the tidal forcing, okay? So as you can see, it compares quite well. And I don't know if you, if you can see or not this gray area here. This gray area here for shipping is problematic, okay? So the average sea level is around 0 0.8. Uh, where is it? Is it here? <coughs> And when, when this average comes below the average sea level, uh, you may have a problem. Low tides may be below the, uh, the chart datum, okay? So then you, ha you may have a problem. So what can we take from this? We, we take from this that the model compares, well, reasonably well with the, the, with the data, especially in this area, okay? Sometimes there are problems. This is a data problem. There was no measurements here, probably. Uh, I, don't, I don't recall. There was a problem in the tide gauge here. I saw it. But sometimes there are some problems here because this, is, this has no uh, treatment for errors or so, things like that. So uh, uh, thank you, uh, Copernicus, for uh, uh, allowing us to use this data in this specific contract. Um, Similar comparison made for the port of Lechonge. Uh, so here we are imposing the global solution to PCOMS, which is a, a, a model that uh, where Hydromod, that Hydromod has along with uh, and developed along with IST uh, for a long time, and uh, we, we have the same comparison. So the tight gauge average of 50 hours uh, and uh, the model, so the model is in black and the data is green, okay? So, and here we have the same average sea level and we see that at least in the last six months, well, there was no problems uh, here. Uh, in Santos it's much more frequent because you have a tide amplitude, a tidal amplitude of about one meter and the, the, the sea level can vary about one, one and a half meters. So it's much more problematic there. Um, but uh, it compares 
quite well also here, the average sea level. Um, now, this is the sea level input from the global model, from uh, CMEMS. So this here is the average uh, from the global model, which we are imposing at the border of PCOMS. <laughs> and it's nice to see that we can create this in our operational model. Okay? And it's nice to see that uh, in higher resolution model, in a higher resolution model, with more processes, we can, uh, we, we can, uh, we can get the physics that is there. Okay? And uh, also, for comparison, we have uh, the EB in blue. This is a, an average also of 15 hours, 50 hours, five zero hours, also from the EB solution, which also is quite close to our solution, okay? Well, sometimes it's a bit worse, sorry. Uh, but uh, it's, well, it's good. So uh, this is an example of what we can get from our models and some, some kind of comparison, intercomparison uh, I've made yesterday because I was curious about it. And, uh, and it's nice to see that uh, this information. Oh, let me go forward. Uh, uh, so Hydromods wish list. Uh, we presented a, a similar wish list one and a half years ago. Uh, so last year in June, I believe, June 2014. Um, we still want this, and it looks like it will happen. Um, uh, so, high resolution solution uh, that we can use to, uh, as boundary conditions, initial conditions for our local models. Um, we would like to have near real time validation, meaning comparison. Comparison of, of the results of these models with measurements. Uh, access to river flows. We've once used uh, the CMEM solutions here. This is in, uh, so this is Rio de la Plata and the Paraná Paraguay River here. And well, we would like to know the flows that are being imposed in these, in these solutions. Uh, of course, the original, the, the meteorological forcing, it's very important for us. Uh, and, well, integration with different data providers, it's, well, let me go a bit ahead. So, this is how it, this is used. So, in, in, in this case, in, in, in centers, in the pilot teach control room, uh, in Leixões, in cell phones, uh, I will talk a bit about this uh, in, in the next presentation, which I think I have to do. Uh, and uh, in web pages, this, the previous was Port of Leixões, this is the Port of Setúbal, uh, this is for the Port of Viana do Castelo, this is a report that is sent every day by email. So this is what our clients and our users see. This is a, a, an oil spill, an oil spill uh, um, in the area of Leixões using the operational forecast that is being made for them. Uh, and as final remarks, um, it's a great evolution from my ocean to, to CMEM. So, uh, a great evolution in terms of talking about business. Business stability is, is of the utmost importance. When I go to a client and I have a contract to sign, I need business stability upstream. So, this is very important. Uh, and so, it's creating business here in Europe, but elsewhere. Uh, two weeks ago, We've, in two days, we've set up a system, an operational system for Peru, based mainly on uh, these public solutions. Okay, so it's very important that we can uh, that we can do what Ramiro was saying. We can do uh, these kind of systems everywhere in the world, um, and 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 it's a fact. So. Uh, operational uh, uh, <coughs> operational systems and is especially high resolution operational operational weather forecast is making its way into these operation rooms cell phones which is vital for this for this uh, information to be useful 
uh, web pages and so on. Thank you. Okay, uh, I do not open the period for questions now because uh, uh, Jose. This talk was had a problem. Um, well, I really don't know the details. I think he talked to Ramiro, but uh, he excused himself uh, and said he couldn't come. But he sent the presentation and 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 asked me to to present it. So um, we we have we have a system working for lesions in Vienna do Castelo, which was established during the the, the Raya project. Uh, and um, it's, in, it's been working uh, since 2011, 2012, I think. Uh, and uh, so, a brief presentation of the port. Uh, so, um, it's, a, uh, uh, it's a public sector company. It manages this port, which is the port of Leixões, uh, but also it manages the port of Viana do Castelo, it's this one. It manages the Douro River, the, the waterway of the Douro River. And, uh, well, this is an image of the main entrance of the port, main road entrance of the port. Uh, and this is the new uh, building of the passengers terminal, uh, the cruise passengers terminal, which is, well, very beautiful. Um, some statistics. Uh, the, in terms of, of, uh, of goods, it is uh, moving around 18 uh, million tons a year, well, at least in 2014, um, about uh, 5,600 ships a year, and around uh, 65,000 passengers here in the, in the cruise uh, terminal, but this year in the Douro River, uh, until now, 700,000 passengers along the Douro River. Okay, so it's a lot of people. So um, they, as they had this system working, they decided to to make their own app for their mobile to to include in their mobile services that they want to use internally for all their, their employees. So uh, this is, um, they developed it in iOS uh, to be used by pilots and by operational managers in real time port operation. So the, the, the idea is that anyone that is at the dock, anyone that is in a ship close to shore can access the information the vital information, so it has to be very simple, very, the, only the vital numbers that they want, that everyone can reach. And it is, uh, it is, it is dependent on our AquaSafe system. So this is it. I'm just going to show you some outputs of, of what they have developed. Of course, we help them, so we develop a specific, uh, specific outputs from the model so that the, the, the logics of the system is all on our side, on our server, and so that they don't have to develop any logics in the in the in the um, in the app. Okay, so this is well, this is an iPhone, his iPhone, I believe. So this is the entrance for the the app, uh, and then what can they see? They can see uh, the present, which is at all, which is the present. Uh, wind velocity and the wind uh, rajada, help me, um, gust, thank you, wind gust, the direction, uh, no, this is not the direction, sorry, uh, so this is the, 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 the velocity, uh, this is the direction, this is three hours ago, the velocity and the gust, and this is what will happen in three hours time, so is it going up or down? Just that information. And the color says if it is going a lot, if it, if it will grow a lot or not. Uh, and then you have tidal information. So the, what is being measured at the tidal gauge and the uh, tidal table. So this is just uh, what the, the uh, official uh, 
tidal information. So this is tidal table, it doesn't have any fo real forecast for the, for the sea level. And the previous, well, uh, uh, low tide or high tide, and the next low tide or high tide, and at what time it will be. And then you have uh, the um, wave, wave heights, right, what is being measured right now outside in the, in the, in the buoy. Uh, you have the period, and you have the power of the wave. Okay? So present time, three hours ago, and in three hours' time, what will happen? Okay? Uh, it will, be, will it go up, down? Then they, they can access to some very simple charts, very simple time series, like this. Okay? Wind, okay. Uh, on a daily basis. So they can see winds. Uh, well, it's, so it's uh, these are um, I cannot see quite well, but uh, so these these are hourly values. Okay. Then they can see week weekly values. So these are days. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And so now please talk.